What's up people, my name is Anton and welcome to September. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a slightly more creative and stylized CRT look inside of After Effects um, using a few plugins but nothing too outlandish. Um, reason for this, I'm currently working on a project which is employing this technique for emissive maps inside of C4D and it worked really well. So rather than recording a super long video um, for the entire project and sort of breaking down a load of stuff in the midst of that, I figured it might be more helpful to sort of split it down to smaller videos, which could be found easier and prove maybe a little more helpful to you guys. But just to overview the functionality, this is the kind of thing we're going to be creating. So in terms of third party plugins straight up, I believe there are two or three that we're using, but from my knowledge, a lot of people have these, if not, um, maybe get them there are a variety of ways they can get these on the internet but the ones that we'll be using that i used here are bcc led which sort of splits down any sort of like footage or sample into the leds themselves um red giant university uh not university <laughs> universe even red giant universe rgb separation and the sapphire plugins for glow and that is pretty much all there is there's amino diffusion as well which is a slightly smaller plugin but that kind of like desaturates it a little bit and applies a cool glitch effect um, and other than that the rest of it is inbuilt and it is just a little bit of compositing so having said that we can open up a new project and I can show you really quick how you can achieve this effect so I'm just going to save that real quick and open up a new composition work with our standard resolution and here we are inside our project so we can create a new background which is pretty much always needed when you're working in After Effects and you can try find yourself some sample footage so I believe I've got some that I found here, which are actually like tour visuals, just for the sake of this, to be able to show you what I mean. Um, we can drag ourselves in a sort of, maybe a smiley face or something like that, or we can take some numbers or whatnot. Drag these in and we can go about resizing these to sort of fit. So we can right click on that, and drag these in here. Control Alt F, just to sort that to our timeline. And you can see we're left with a pretty decent loop here already, which should work quite nicely. Um, bearing in mind, obviously, with the look that I was going for anyway, I sort of wanted a black background with a piece of text which sort of had the focus of the piece. If you start adding photos or videos, it could work, but it might get a little over bright when you start adding glows and shines and things like that. So um, just bear that in mind. Um, if you're using emission maps, you shouldn't need too much, but the... LEDs themselves will sort of like dull down any glow anyway because when you think about it it's not the whole shape you're sort of breaking it up into smaller sections so quick tip is if we leave the background we can right click on this and hit pre-compose and that's going to mean that we can double click into this pre-comp and change whatever the sample footage is here straight away without having to copy and paste any effects it just automatically gets applied to this pre-composition here so if you guys aren't aware already we can quickly grab up some CRT sample footage so you can look at what this kind of stuff actually looks like because this when you start to learn a software you are able to do this you can quite literally pick up a photo reference crt screen effect maybe um and you can remake it so we're looking for an rgb separation well firstly you want to kind of split the image down into pixels or squares similar to this and then rgb separate it you don't need to have it exactly like this, but the closer you get, the um, the better essentially. And the BCC LED plugin essentially allows us to do this. Um, so things to bear in mind is that you're looking at sphere spheres instead of um, circles. And quite often they're scaled up a little bit, just like this, they're not entirely square. So just things to bear in mind and we can literally remake that now. So if we right click, create a new adjustment layer and drag our trusty BCC, LED layer on wherever this is there is a lot um, we can put this on you can see it is splitting up into quite large squares at the minute so if we move this down to maybe five and five you see this needs to go down a little more we can even make this one uh, bear in mind this is actually changing the size of the pixel so it's changing the gap so if you want to make this both quite small we're already getting some pretty nice pixels here but I'd even want the pixels to be smaller if possible so this was a slight issue I seem to run into last time where this looks good, but I almost wanted it to be slightly smaller. And the only way I seemed to manage doing that was scaling this up. So the sample footage itself, or rather we can just create a adjustment layer so that we are not affecting the footage too much. 
scaling this up like this, maybe something like 150, which means that the LEDs have more detail to work with and then scaling this back down. But for now, we'll leave it to, with something like this. Make sure we're saving this. <laughs> Just had some extra powers at the end and we can get back going. So here is our LED for now. Um, so there are a few more settings in here. So obviously, like I mentioned, you've got the LED shape you can change. So you want this to be square, you could do that. Very slight effect, but it does matter. And what I would have added a lot doing last time, which didn't seem to have a massive effect, but it did sort of work, was if we scale this up. So if you right click the, sorry, click on the lock to scale, you can change the scale of this. So we make that one and one, they're gonna be identical. If you make this one and two, they're gonna have a slight little stretch to them, which is incredibly subtle but I sort of like the way it looked because it sort of added a little more of a CRT look. So we can leave it about three for now. I think that worked quite well. And just to, if we focus on the foreground for the second, we can add some RGB separation. And the plugin I found was literally by searching RGB, found this RGB separation plugin here. You have the choice to put this either before the LED or after the LED. So if we set the radius, maybe something like five, you can see the RGB separation that's happening. If we deactivate the LED, you can see that what we're doing is quite literally just doing that. So it's not separating it by the pixel, but it does a pretty good job of simulating the effect whilst keeping this. And you get you get a good little blur on each, each segment there. So we can set that to something like five to exaggerate it on the edges. And you can see the difference of if we put it before the LEDs versus after. I'm tempted to put it after the LEDs in this case because it creates a nice little blur here on the whites, which presumably gets removed when you take it back. So we'll leave it there and from here what we can do is that it's important that if you to know that if you add any uh, more adjustment layers on this the background is going to be completely black which when you look doesn't typically seem to be the case you have this sort of residual um, rgb split here from even on the back so what you want really to be dealing with is a slight gray so if we grab the RGB, the background layer here sorry even and just get some brightness and contrast we can tick use legacy here and just turn that up a little bit to something like 150 although that doesn't seem to be working if we bring this up oh ah it's because the background layer isn't actually visible my bad so if we were even to grab this and presumably just chuck a brightness and contrast on that. Make sure we're taking use legacy. It's going to brighten up the background just a little bit. And we literally want a touch, a touch of that, but just enough to pass through the LEDs so that we're getting some residue like that. And this is the kind of starting to get the kind of effect that we want. We can make this brighter than we than we need currently for the moment. Um, because we can current color cut little color correct it lighter with the LUT. Um, and you can see we're getting some nice. RGB separation even on the background there. So we're already starting to get a pretty decent effect. Um, some sort of like final tips here if you really wanted to composite this or get the, get this ready to render out. Um, we're working with a frame rate of 15 here. Um, that That is fairly low. That is similar to the frame rate of my intro. If you sort of pay attention to that, it's quite, it's quite small. Um, you can up that pretty easily just by going to composition and then ooh, composition settings here and just changing that to 30 there. But for me, I, th I kind of like the low FPS look because it gives a sort of analog feel to the footage that you're creating. So you can change that there. You can also, you can you can export this as an emission map really because you're getting some pretty, um, well, pretty binary colors here. You know, you're not you're adding too much glow or complication, which could look strange in 3D software. But if you're going for like a sort of realism or stylized look, what I tend to do is add a little bit of glow and um, some minor color correction just to give a little more contrast um, and also a fish eye effect. I forgot about that. So if we wanted to do that, we could right click, uh, create a new adjustment layer. You can name your adjustment layers. Obviously, if you're an organized bean, you can, but um, I just tend to whack them on to create the effect that I want. So I do a lot of experimenting and we can grab a fish eye effect, which is, it's got choices here, universe or um, sapphire. Sapphire has always, always done me right. So I'll pick that for now. And you can see it's incredibly strong. But if we turn down the Z dist a little bit, which tends to be the distance and maybe this down to about 0.5, we can sort of start to create more of a warp, which you'll kind of see if we turn that off versus on, which helps a bit. Um, bear in mind, we're getting these sides at the minute here. So we can change that here, I believe, to tile and tile or even no and no, but we're gonna get these black edges, which look a little funny. So what I prefer to do is reactivate these to reflect 
and just duplicate the adjustment layer, delete the actual effect and add a vignette instead, which works quite well. If you just get S vignette and set the opacity here to something like two, it's just gonna blur those out and focus on our CRT here in the middle. We can also, if we're gonna create more of a look, head to our sample footage here and just get a flicker effect, which is going to, funnily enough, make our footage flicker. Um, we can set this to something like one and just really quickly pre-render this. And you'll see we're getting a, if we just shorten this down, we're getting a nice little flicker there, which is gonna give more of an analog look too. So we can head back into our composite here and see what we're dealing with working quite nice. Um, and just to finish this off, if we wanted or if a glitch effect like you saw, saw the last one, that effect is down to um, amino diffusion, I believe. So we can right click on this, head to adjustment layer and drag that over the top and grab an amino diffusion. You have a load here which all do different things, but essentially they're pretty good at glitching out your footage. Um, there's also a plugin called modulation, which is really good. I might cover that in a later video, but for now, amino diffusion sort of seemed to work the best for me. And you'll get a pretty quick idea of what this is able to do here. Um, if you, it's, very, it's actually quite subtle here, but if you play with the settings, maybe something too like four, or, or an up. We're almost getting some sort of point, point to mess about here a little bit so you can sort of see what you're doing. Uh, maybe because of the sign of, oof, maybe because it's all white. You seem to be getting a bit of a interesting look. This is where the experimentation obviously comes in. You don't want it to be half missing like that. And it's also important to make sure you're pre-rendering in full at this point. So because when you're working in half, sometimes it changes. So make sure you're stuck in full. If you made this 0.5 and 0.5, I think those were the settings I had before, which I use a pretty good glitch effect on here, but I'm not entirely sure how visible it would be if you actually um, activated this. See, you don't, you don't really get too much of an effect and it's not a good, not a good trade for the sort of render time um, you'll be experiencing. So if I just try to grab modulation, which I know is another one that I have. Um, you can give a quick Google and find a lot of these. Unfortunately, I wish I could source them. I can't because they're paid. Um, but if you're smart, I'm sure you can think of a way of getting these. Um, and we can start speaking the effect of this. So we can turn this down. These streaks are getting a little, little crazy, especially if it's just the text that you're wanting. Well, having said that, you can always keep them. It's handy little reset button there where things get a little too mad. But you can even go out here, you can see that whatever you're actually doing gets imported straight away under the LEDs and whatnot. And, oh God, it adds a little more movement if that's what you're after. Um, we can go about it inverting this even. So this would be probably good as an emission map if you wanted something completely white. Although it, see, it doesn't work hand in hand with the vignette too well. Um, we can right click this and sort of play with some low pass filters. Set this up to, okay, so you've got phase here. You've got 0.5. Better that, maybe better move that down a little bit. 0.9, 0.8, we're getting these stripes. Maybe it's 0.2, the stripes seem to get just more frequent. So, mm, let's take a look. We've got distortion here. So maybe if we move that up. It's got rid of those stripes, thankfully. And bear in mind, I, I don't actually have an end goal in mind here. I'm sort of just finding something which looks looks good and hopefully you can employ a sort of similar technique. Oh, trial and error, so we can control Z that. We are getting some lines, but move, move this down. They, they just become more frequent, so we could move it down to like what, 0 0.1 and call it something like this, just add a little more glitchy movement. Um, you know, trying to make this a little separate from all the other CRT tutorials, maybe you can, you know, add a little bit of like new generation inspiration <laughs> to your piece. Uh, and you can see that if we plug into the main thing here, we're getting some nice pixel variation, some nice pixel density, which could make your product look a little bit better. 
So if we want to sort of start rounding this off, we can leave the vignette at the top here. Um, you don't really want to know the vignettes there. It looks quite nice when it's black, but as soon as you start color correcting, I'd, re I'd recommend keeping it over the vignette so you're not leaving this sort of uncorrected black cloud over your, beat, over your piece. And you can grab some glow. So if we just chuck that on right here, and you can see getting a nice little bit of glow. We can change the brightness up and glow with two to something that works quite nicely. So set the threshold down if you want a complete glow, but obviously that is a little too much. Um, although we're getting a nice little CRT look there. Bear in mind we're about to color correct this too. So what we can do is right click. Go to new adjustment layer and it does get a little confusing with the adjustment layers now so maybe we can start laying in color correction leds whatnot all the way through here um, lumetri color is my go-to plugin for color correcting anything video related and after effects i was using brightness and contrast in curves and levels and all sorts of stuff for a very long time and this sort of puts it all in one place very usefully um, along with a few lut settings which i found really useful so that's a little tip there so if we wanted to crow about correcting this, we could literally hop into basic correction. If there's anything that stands out to you that you want to change, for example, contrast, you can up that a little bit to maybe something like 50 and dull down some of that background. Um, but what I found really useful is for creating like creative looks as a little tab here, you can grab one of these LETs. This is all included in After Effects. And pretty quickly by selecting the right ones, some seems to be con, you've got some Cinespace ones here. You have, I think this is, this is one of the ones I use. You've got some ones which like seem a little cooler, like that. By cooler, I mean temperature-wise, um, which already see, so you get quite a nice like, little glow here. So that's literally the difference between before and after. It's quite stark, and this is something that I use quite a lot when I'm trying to create something a little different. Um, if you think if you think the background is too dark, you can head to your brightness here. So we're all controlling everything in one composition here, which works quite well. You can tone that up and you're getting a pretty nice look here. This is something that I would I would be pretty happy to include in my project. Um, you're getting a good separation between the foreground or when I say the foreground, I mean like the subject and the the like the sort of duller bits of the screen here. And you're getting a super cool color correction LUT, which although it doesn't seem too important, it will add a lot to your CRT renders. And just like that, I'd say you're pretty, you're pretty cool. Um, something to bear in mind is that obviously you're working with a pre this this sort of um, this sort of setup is like a delicate dance between what your footage is in the first place and the effects that you have over it right so obviously we've got our LEDs we've got our layer stack here which sort of creates a CRT effect but um, if you really want to take step take it a step further it's almost like in 3D um, like your geometry versus the textures, right? It's a, it's a pretty delicate dance. Like it's a 50-50 split between both of them. If your, ge if your geometry is terrible, but your textures are really good, your render is going to look a little off. And at the same time, if your textures are not so great, but your geometry is amazing, same thing, right? So you want to think about that too. So something I would do is we've got the glitch effect here, which is quite cool. But if we take a look at our sample footage here and it's still boring, there may be more that you can do. Um, if we're creating, creating a CRT effect, I know of a plugin, which I didn't use last time, but you can use this time. Um, if you want to create that over, there's a TV damage layer, which I think you can tweak some settings over, um, which essentially has like glow bars and stuff, which move over. Um, super old, like intro plugin you might you might have seen. It's pretty widely used, but um, a lot of people use it in quite a, quite a silly way. So you, these are the settings which allow us sort of like tweaks different parts of the plugin. So you can turn down the reception master, which is all the fuzz, um, I believe, or rather, maybe not. Interference, I think, is the fuzz. Um, and we can turn out the ghost, wing, which is obviously the ghosting there. And we've got color strikes, take drop out, reception. What is reception? So reception seems to be almost like the master control here. You can turn out the static amplitude there. That's that's what I was after. And you're getting a little bit of movement here. So we wanted to change the vertical hold in there horizontal that sort of stops it waving about and you've got these bars which although seem quite small may actually create a little more like it's sort of almost like a randomness like a variation to your piece um, you can change the bars brightness here to something more like one and if you hop back into your old piece or your sort of your master comp here you can see we get some glow bars like that which move up and down and create more of that analog crt look so um 
as I said earlier, I say, I, I'd be inclined to say I'm pretty happy with this piece. You're creating a really nice CRT look here. Um, and it's something that you can use a lot in so many different ways um, and seems to be a little hot at the minute in creating. A lot of people are selling loads of packs and products and random plugins which sort of create this effect when you can do it um, your own way with a little more control. So hope you guys appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I have some more stuff coming very soon related to this in a project that I'm working on. And I will see you in the next video. So thank you for watching.